In this video, we will explore simple harmonic motion. First, the rules for simple harmonic motion will be explained and demonstrated by deriving the equations of motion of some common systems that demonstrate simple harmonic motion. Then the concept of angular frequency will be described and connected to the equations of motion through the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. Secondly, the motion of the oscillator will be described qualitatively with a focus on the velocity and acceleration at the equilibrium point and the maximum displacements. The relationships between the period, displacement, velocity, and acceleration will also be explored. Finally, the energy of a mass undergoing simple harmonic motion will be explained and the graph of energy as a function of position will be discussed. An oscillation is a type of motion that repeats periodically. The frequency of the motion is defined as the number of oscillations that occur per second and has the units of hertz, which is the equivalent of 1 over a second. And period of the motion is the time it takes to complete one oscillation. Period has the units of seconds. The frequency and the period are inverses of each other. Simple harmonic motion is a type of oscillation in which the net force, referred to as the restoring force, has two specific characteristics. It is directly proportional to the displacement of the object from the equilibrium position, and its direction is always pointed to the equilibrium position, in the opposite direction of the displacement. That is represented by a negative sign in the proportionality statement. Because of Newton's second law, which relates the net force to the acceleration of the mass, these requirements can also be stated in terms of the acceleration. The equilibrium position occurs when the net force is equal to zero. Simple harmonic motion can be modeled using circular motion. A mass on a spring on a frictionless horizontal surface will move in simple harmonic motion. This motion is one-dimensional and has a constant period. The mass oscillates between a negative and positive maximum displacement through an equilibrium point. If we consider a point moving in circular motion and observe its motion in one dimension, the point will be moving in simple harmonic motion with the same period as the circular motion. Simple harmonic motion can be considered a one-dimensional projection of circular motion. The angular frequency is the rate of angular displacement and is given by the symbol omega. Omega is equal to the change in angle divided by the time. In circular motion, the mass completes one full circle of 2 pi radians in one period. Using the relationship for the angular frequency, omega for a mass undergoing simple harmonic motion is 2 pi divided by the period. Because the frequency is the inverse of the period, the angular frequency can be written in terms of the frequency of the motion. The angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. The angular frequency is also known as the angular velocity and has the units of radians per second. The angular frequency of a system undergoing simple harmonic motion is determined by physical properties of the system. The acceleration of a mass undergoing simple harmonic motion is described by the equation acceleration is equal to minus omega squared, the angular frequency squared, times the displacement x. This formula demonstrates the conditions for simple harmonic motion as it shows the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement with omega squared being the constant of proportionality and the negative sign in the formula demonstrates that the acceleration and the displacement are in opposite directions so that the acceleration is pointing towards the equilibrium point. This formula can also be expressed in terms of the net force by using Newton's second law. Although many situations can exhibit simple harmonic motion, two common systems that demonstrate simple harmonic motion are a mass on a spring and a pendulum displaced by a small angle. For the mass on a horizontal spring on a frictionless surface, the net force acting on the mass will be the force applied by the spring. The force applied by the spring is described by Hooke's law, where the spring force, Fh, is equal to minus k, the spring constant, times x, the displacement or the change in length of the spring. Displacing the mass on a spring from the equilibrium position to a maximum displacement x0 will increase the spring force acting on the mass, creating a net force acting on the mass when the mass is released. Because Hooke's law states that the magnitude of the spring force is directly proportional to the displacement, 
the net force will be directly proportional to the displacement of the mass, demonstrating the first condition for simple harmonic motion. At the equilibrium position, the net force is equal to zero, but as the displacement increases, the spring force increases linearly, causing the net force to increase linearly. At the maximum displacement, the net force will be a maximum. Because of Newton's second law, the same conditions will apply to the acceleration of the mass. According to Hooke's law, the direction of the spring force will be opposite the direction of its displacement. For this system, if the displacement of the mass is to the right of the equilibrium position, the spring force will be directed left, towards the equilibrium position. If the displacement of the mass is to the left of the equilibrium position, the spring force will be directed to the right, towards the equilibrium position. In both cases, the net force will be pointing in the opposite direction of the displacement towards the equilibrium position. Because the system obeys these two conditions, the mass will move in simple harmonic motion. This can be shown mathematically by finding the acceleration of the mass. Using Newton's second law, F net equals ma, and solving for the acceleration gives the equation for the acceleration of the mass at any position. The acceleration a is equal to minus the spring constant k divided by the mass m times the displacement x. Comparing this equation to the defining equation of simple harmonic motion, the acceleration is equal to minus omega squared times the displacement x, shows that the angular frequency for the mass is equal to the square root of k over m, the spring constant, divided by the mass. Because omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, the period of the system can be found to be 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant k. Notice that the period of a mass spring system is independent of the amplitude and is determined by the physical constants of the system, the mass and the spring constant. A similar analysis of the pendulum makes use of the small angle approximation to determine that the acceleration of the pendulum is given by the equation acceleration is equal to minus g over l x, where g is the gravitational field strength and l is the length of the string. Notice that this equation demonstrates the two conditions for simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement and points towards the equilibrium position. Comparing this equation to the defining equation of simple harmonic motion shows that the angular frequency of the mass is equal to the square root of g, the gravitational field strength, divided by l, the length of the string. Because omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, the period of the system can be found to be period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of l, the length of the string, divided by g, the gravitational field strength. Notice that this period of motion is independent of the amplitude of oscillation and is determined by the physical constants of the system, the gravitational field strength, and the length of the string. The motion of a mass undergoing simple harmonic motion can be described qualitatively by considering the velocity and acceleration at the maximum displacement in the positive and negative directions and at the equilibrium position in the midpoint of its motion. At the maximum displacement, the acceleration is at a maximum magnitude and the velocity will be zero. At the equilibrium point, the velocity will be a maximum and the acceleration will be zero. The acceleration will point towards the equilibrium position, so when the mass has a positive displacement, the acceleration will be negative, and when the mass has a negative displacement, it will be positive. The acceleration and velocity vectors are in the same direction for half a period, causing the object's velocity to increase, and are in opposite directions for half a period when the object's velocity is decreasing. This motion can be shown in a graph of the speed as a function of position of the oscillator. The speed will be a maximum at the equilibrium point and zero at the maximum displacements. The total mechanical energy of a mass undergoing simple harmonic motion is the sum of its potential energy and kinetic energy. As the mass oscillates, the mechanical energy is being converted from kinetic to potential and back again. The type of potential energy that the system has will depend on the system. 
For a mass spring system, it will be elastic potential energy. For other systems, it would be a different form of potential energy. Elastic potential energy is given by the equation elastic potential energy is equal to one half times the spring constant times the displacement squared. The energy is proportional to the square of the displacement. If we consider the energy of a mass spring system undergoing simple harmonic motion through the use of a graph of energy as a function of position, the total energy is constant, resulting in a horizontal line on the graph. At the maximum displacements, the total energy is in the form of potential energy, and at the equilibrium point, the potential energy is zero. Because the elastic potential energy is proportional to the displacement squared, this graph will be parabolic. The kinetic energy will be zero at the maximum displacements and equal to the total energy at the equilibrium point. Because the total energy at any point is the sum of the potential and kinetic energies, this kinetic energy graph will also be parabolic but inverted. This graph applies to all simple harmonic oscillators. In summary, simple harmonic motion is defined by two conditions. The net force or acceleration acting on a mass is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium, and the direction of the net force or acceleration points towards the equilibrium position. These rules are shown in the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is equal to the angular frequency squared times the displacement. The acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement because omega squared is a constant. Secondly, the acceleration is pointing towards the equilibrium position, which is shown through the negative sign in the equation. Omega is the angular frequency of the system. Omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. The angular frequency is based on physical characteristics of the system. For a mass spring system, the angular frequency is equal to the square root of the spring constant k divided by the mass m. For a pendulum, the angular frequency is equal to the square root of the gravitational field strength g divided by the length l. From these angular frequencies, the period of oscillations of these systems can be found. For the mass on a spring, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant, and for the pendulum, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length divided by the gravitational field strength g. The total energy, or mechanical energy, of a simple harmonic oscillator is the sum of its potential and kinetic energies. This total energy is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the oscillator. As the system undergoes simple harmonic motion, the total energy remains constant and transfers between kinetic and potential energies. At the maximum displacements, the kinetic energy is zero and the total energy is in the form of potential energy. At the equilibrium position, the potential energy is zero and the total energy is in the form of kinetic energy. The potential and kinetic energies form parabolas when graphed as a function of the position of the oscillator. Thank you for watching.